Hi, I'm Doug Carroll for InsidersGuideToFinance.com and the topic du jour is negative interest rates and negative bond yields. Now admittedly, a lot of people have trouble wrapping their heads around those concepts. And at first glance, negative interest rates seem quite irrational. Think about the literal implication of a negative interest rate, such as a negative rate on a deposit or bonds being issued at negative yield. That means the borrower can pay off the debt by returning less funds than initially obtained. That clearly seems the height of irrationality. Yet despite that fact, there are good economic arguments as to why interest rates might be negative. And by the way, they have nothing to do with the reasoning the central banks typically trot out to justify their zero, zero interest rate policy or NIRP negative interest rate policy because despite the canons of traditional economic theory, low interest rates are not necessarily stimulative. And if you think so, you don't know anything about the history of the U.S. and the aftermath of the stock market crash and the Great Depression of the 1930s, or Japan after the bursting of its bubble in the late 1980s, or for that matter, given more recent history, uh, most of the world, but especially Japan, the U.S., and Europe in the aftermath of the financial crisis. But we're not going down the rabbit hole of economic policy. We're going to stick to financial markets and look at the market-based justification for low or negative rates of interest. And we'll, we'll break that argument into two pieces. We'll talk about negative interest rates at the short end of the yield curve and negative interest rates at the long end of the yield curve. And while both share a generally common justification, that is an association with financial panics or financial turmoil, uh, the, the underlying rationale is a little bit different depending upon where we're sitting on the yield curve. So let's start with the short under the yield curve first. Why would anyone be willing to hold short-term government securities at a negative rate of interest? Well, and realize that most fixed income investors have to stay invested in the fixed income market. It's the nature of their mandate. The issue is what are they going to decide to hold? Now, one might think that Rather than holding an investment at negative interest rates, you might as well just hold cash, physical money. Well, if that were possible, perchance, but given the structure of the money supply, it's not really possible. Let's look at a relatively broad measure of money, M2. M2 is comprised of physical money in circulation, that's cash and coins in the hands of the public cash and coins in the hands of the commercial banks, the central banks, or the treasury, that's not part of the money supply. So M2 is made up of physical money in circulation, cash and coins in circulation, and a wide range of deposits. Checkable deposits like checking accounts or now accounts, negotiable orders of withdrawal, or various sorts of time deposits, savings accounts, small CDs, non-institutional money market funds. Physical money in circulation typically makes up 11 to 12 percent of the money supply. Deposits make up another 88 to 89 percent. So together those two typically comprise about 99.9 .9 percent of M2. Oh, 0.1 percent is made up of traveler's checks and the like. But note what that means. That means it would be physically impossible for individuals and investors to convert all their holding monies into physical cash. Forget trying to turn your bonds into physical cash. There simply isn't enough of it. So that means some portion of the money holdings, in fact, the majority of money holdings, will have to be held in bank deposits. Well, think about the consequence of holding bank deposits in the midst of financial panic. If one holds bank deposits, one has the credit risk of the banking institution. Now, of course, there's deposit insurance, but deposit insurance only covers the first quarter million, $250,000 of deposits per depositor, per depository institution in the United States. And naturally, most institutions have <laughs> cash holdings well in excess of those insurance uh, limits. Consequently, in the, the depths of some financial turmoil, institutional investors are facing a choice. When interest rates are low or negative, the choice is holding government bills at negative interest rates, say, or holding bank deposits at very low or maybe no interest rate. In fact, with uh, fees and expenses tacked on top of very low interest rates, many de bank deposits have been facing institutions with effective negative interest rates. Well, think about the alternatives. 
Would you rather hold nearly default risk-free government securities at a slight negative interest rate or hold a bank deposit at maybe a slight positive or maybe a slight negative interest rate and probably above the, the rate that is a less negative rate than is available on short-term treasury securities, but you've got the credit risk of the banking institution. So especially in the midst of financial turmoil, institutions will look at those two alternatives, short-term government bills at a negative rate or bank deposits at a slightly less negative or maybe slightly positive rate but then with the credit risk of the banking institution. Well, especially when times are really at least perceived to be bad or very risky, holding the short-term government debt at a slightly more negative yield seems like the more optimal choice given the lack of default risk. However, what about intermediate to long-term treasury or government securities at negative interest rates? Surely one wouldn't want to buy a 10-year JGB or a 10-year bond and lock yourself into a negative rate of return over the 10 years to maturity. Now, of course, I'm mixing apples and oranges there because negative yields are not the same thing as negative rates of return. And this is not the place to get into yields versus rates of returns. So if that's a topic of interest, check out our video on that topic. But the reason a negative yield is not a negative rate of return is because the rate of return to maturity depends on the reinvestment income and all the cash flows received prior to maturity. And realize that investors buying 10-year JGBs or 10-year bonds at negative yields were not buying them with the intent of locking in a negative rate of return over the 10 years to maturity. The reason institutional investors would buy intermediate to longer term government securities at negative yields was a form of portfolio insurance. Again, remembering that most institutional investors will have to be invested in the fixed income market somewhere. The matter is picking their poison, deciding on which securities they want to hold, especially if there were concerns of the reemergence of something like the financial crisis of 08, or Grexit, or uh, U.S. Treasury seeing its credit rating cut, or something like that. Institutional investors would buy a form of portfolio insurance by putting a portion of their portfolio in intermediate to longer term government bonds. And that way, if a financial crisis manifested itself in most of the other sectors of the credit markets, interest rates would be rising, but the financial panic would drive a flight to safety or flight to quality, thus bidding up the prices, in other words, driving down the yields of treasury or government bonds. And even if they were already negative, they'd go even more negative. Ergo, the profit on that portion of the portfolio would offset to some extent losses on the balance of the portfolio. But those are good market-based reasons why, despite their seeming irrationality, negative rates, at least at times, actually make sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can go to our YouTube channel or Facebook page to see other videos on a range of investment-related topics. Or you can go to the website, insidersguidetofinance.com. At our website, in addition to the free video shorts, there are a series of modestly priced, in-depth training videos with running times of approximately one hour each that go into a number of subjects in greater detail. The website and Facebook page also contain information about open enrollment programs I will be presenting over the next few months and my recently released book, The Insider's Guide to Fixed Income Securities and Markets.